Every year, more than 36 million commercial flights take to the sky, and that number is only growing. Air travel can get confusing if it's your first time, and there are a lot of things even frequent flyers get wrong. So, to help you out, here are the answers to several questions almost every passenger has. What happens if the door opens mid-flight? Goodbye! Nah, only in the movies. If someone were able to open the door mid-flight, they would be immediately pulled out of the plane by the sudden change in air pressure. It could also do serious harm to the aircraft, potentially even causing it to crash. Fortunately, that's almost impossible. The doors on an airliner open inward, while the cabin pressure pushes them out from the inside. The difference between the internal and external pressure makes it impossible for the door to open. What are the rules for electronic devices? Well, once upon a time, you couldn't use any electronics during a flight. But this is no longer the case. Most airlines will let you use small devices as long as they're on airplane mode. Laptops need to be stowed during takeoff or landing, but tablets, phones, and other handheld devices are usually allowed. Just remember that the device needs to be secured. That means in your hand or your pocket, but not on your lap or tray table. Why do seats and tray tables need to be upright during takeoff and landing? Planes are one of the safest modes of transportation out there. Still, when accidents happen, it's usually during takeoff or landing. In the event of an emergency, the last thing anyone needs is to get stuck in their seat. This is also one of the reasons that large devices like laptops aren't allowed during these times. It's too easy for them to wind up on the floor and trip people up. Are older planes safe? What do you mean by that, you little whippersnapper? Eh, <laughs> you probably aren't still using a laptop from 1999, and your computer isn't flying at close to the speed of sound. Fortunately, planes have a much longer lifespan than computers. There are airliners from the early 1970s that are still just fine. They might not be able to keep up in terms of speed and fuel efficiency, but older planes are no less safe than their modern counterparts. And here's a bonus fact. The oldest aircraft still officially in service is a Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker, which has been used for mid-air refueling since 1957. Why do airplanes fly so high? Most commercial planes fly at an altitude of around 35,000 feet. They don't technically need to be up so high, but that altitude gives the best speed and efficiency. Air gets thinner at higher altitudes, which means less wind resistance, but less lift. For most commercial aircraft, the area between 30,000 and 40,000 feet is the sweet spot, where the two factors balance out. Why do window shades need to be open during landing? It might seem odd that the flight crew cares whether your window shades are up or down. <laughs> Sounds rather shady to me. <laughs> Actually, the main reason is so the passenger's eyes can adjust to the outside light. Mostly, it's just a matter of getting people on and off quickly. But in an emergency, the last thing they want is people stopping to blink before they evacuate the plane. Where does the flight crew sleep on long-haul flights? Normally in the aisles in first class, they're a bit wider and more comfortable. No, I made that up. You can't seriously expect someone to sit behind the controls for the duration of a 17-hour flight. On most flights longer than 7 or 8 hours, pilots have access to a specially designed rest seat in or near the cockpit. Flight attendants typically have a section of the cabin reserved for them, and it's sometimes separated from the passenger areas. Some larger aircraft even feature private crew quarters above or below the main cabin. Have you ever been on an 18-hour flight? What's the longest time you ever had to spend sitting in one place? Leave your answer in the comments below. What do the numbers on airport runways mean? No, it's not the number of mishaps per runway. Ever notice the numbers at the end of the runway? They're actually used to show the pilot which direction the plane is facing. For example, the number 36 is short for a heading of 360 degrees, or due north. Along with the numbers, the letters R and L indicate if the nearest runway is to the left or right. What are the colored lights on the wings? 
The lights on the tips of a plane's wings are called position lights or navigation lights, and they're used during times of reduced visibility. They help planes see each other in the dark and can also tell pilots what direction an aircraft is traveling. The red lights mark the tip of the left wing, while the green light is on the right. The third light is white and found on or near the tail. What causes the white trails planes leave in the sky? Contrails are easily mistaken for engine exhaust, but most are nothing more than water vapor. During a flight, moisture in the air collects in the engines before being vented with the exhaust. The hot, wet air leaving the engines mixes with the freezing, dry air found at high altitudes, resulting in long, thin lines of vapor. Humidity determines when contrails form and how long they remain visible. What does it mean when the crew times out? Have they been bad and need to go sit in the corner? No. According to regulations, pilots can't be on duty for more than 14 hours at a time, and they shouldn't be at the controls for more than 9. Timing out refers to when the crew has worked for the maximum number of hours. This is mostly a safety issue, so it's taken very seriously. Fortunately, most airlines are careful to schedule shifts around these requirements. What happens to items confiscated by security before boarding? Hey, would you like to see what's in my garage? No, not really. If you find yourself with a forbidden item, security will usually let you leave to put it in your car. Most airports will also give you the option of storing it in your checked bags. If you're running out of time to board your flight, you can ask them to hold it in the lost and found until you get back. But be careful, since it isn't always easy to get your property back. And before you go, here's one more bonus fact. One of the most common items to be left behind at the airport are laptop computers. You see, laptops need to be taken out of their carrying case for inspection. And it's incredibly common for passengers to forget their computer and walk off with an empty case. Denver International Airport once collected a pile of 95 laptops in just one month. Wow! Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right, and remember, stay on the bright side of life!